Okay, man, we gotta talk about it. What the hell is going on with Halo in 343? Because the recent news from Jason Schreier, again, a very credible gaming insider news info guy, said that over 10,000 people were laid off from Microsoft, but most hit were the Xbox division along with Bethesda. And for us Halo fans, guys, most notably developers 343. Saying here that 343 was hit hard by these layoffs. But most notably, Joseph Staten, who joined 343 in 2020 to steer Halo Infinite towards the finish line, is leaving the studio to rejoin Xbox Publishing. And the last time I had news hit me that hard was when Chris Lee left 343, and we all kind of know the state of the game at that time. It wasn't good. Now this is a bit of a perfect storm kind of thing that's going on with Halo and 343 at the moment right now. The economic downturn is happening right now. A lot of large companies are kind of expecting a slowdown of the economy where a lot of layoffs are happening right now we saw amazon doing large cuts of 18,000 people being cut from the company and then along with that there was that hiring freeze that microsoft has been doing for the last few months essentially tying 343's hands where they can only accomplish so much in such a little amount of time and from the ceo satya nadella saying that they're only going to be hiring people when it's absolutely needed essentially and of course the state of halo infinite not exactly thriving other sources saying that at least 60 people were let go from 343, and that's a significant portion as they employ over 450 people. But this next bit of information is probably the most doomium part of the whole thing. Saying that heaviest hit were the individuals working towards the single player side of Halo Infinite. But we do have a quote from the studio head Pierre Heinz, or Hintz, however you pronounce his last name, about these current cuts that are happening. Saying we've made the difficult decision to restructure elements of our team, which means some roles are being eliminated. Like Carson Alexander Lewis, who is part of the technical audio team at 343. Joshua Hinosko, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, was now formerly the live broadcast producer. Matt Klein, who I actually had a chance to meet and hang out with previously, really nice guy, had to leave as well. He was part of the esports team at 343. Now, a former 343 developer who helped create Halo Infinite and the multiplayer side of things actually really spoke out about this. Actually kind of surprising what he said. And it doesn't put Microsoft and 343 in good light. Patrick Wren, who was the former senior multiplayer designer at 343 for Halo Infinite, saying that the layouts at 343 shouldn't have happened and Halo Infinite should be in a better state. The reason for both of these things is incompetent leadership up top during Halo Infinite's development causing massive stress on those working hard to make Halo the best it can be. Which is kind of starting to make sense as pretty much all top leadership that were involved with the development of Halo Infinite are no longer at 343. I feel like saying massive stress kind of adds to what crunch is, kind of like another way of saying it, even though they were stressing to say no crunch, but I mean, it's definitely happening. But also just think about it. I couldn't imagine 343 getting much more support from a publisher than Microsoft really could have done. Having six years between mainline Halo titles when normally it's like a three year gap, they certainly got plenty of funding and plenty of time to make this game, but it just seemed like they just barely got it over the finish line. I mean, they even delayed Halo Infinite on the launch of a new console, which is supposed to be like the new console mover, right? Which it doesn't seem like Halo Infinite is going to be much of an Xbox pusher anymore as this recent Xbox Series X box that was shown in China that was recently revealed on Reddit showcases Starfield on the box and no longer Halo Infinite. Obviously with Halo Infinite being out for over a year now, Starfield being the new cool thing, it does kind of make sense to make that transition, but it just still hurts to see that happen as a Halo fan. And with the odd game choice decisions that we see within Halo Infinite right now that just got completely redone, like say like the challenge system or the progression system, the whole battle pass system, how events were initially worked, like there's so much things that were just redone just because of community feedback was saying like, what are you doing? That's a terrible idea. Clearly, it's a management issue. That's how it has to be. There's no other way around it. And it seems like Microsoft is kind of cleaning house with 343 and just kind of cutting all the things that they don't really need right now for Halo. And from what we've heard right now, what I've heard from other uh, content creators and around what's going around right now is that 343 might be moving more towards a publisher kind of standpoint of Halo rather than a developer. Again, that's rumors and information that's going around, nothing confirmed, but it does seem to kind of make sense for all the positions that we're seeing being let go right now at 343, that it looks like they're really just gonna be focusing on the multiplayer side of things, which kind of rounds back to what I talked about earlier saying, 
that was my biggest concern about this bit of info was saying that the campaign team was hit really hard about this. And we know that Joseph Stain was essentially the lead when it comes to everything campaign related for Halo Infinite. And now that he's moving from 343 back to Xbox publishing, it makes me think that Halo Infinite is not going for this 10 year plan. I highly doubt that it will go past anything 2024. Now I've heard rumors saying that season four was cut and that's gonna be the end of Halo season three. I really doubt that. Halo's not going away anytime soon. I mean, the game is still new. It's still getting updates. It's a lot of things were really set in stone and planned out for 2023. A lot of content that's been made and created. So I do expect to see full support moving forward for Halo Infinite as Microsoft already anticipated that part of their budget. So we'll see season three, season four, five, maybe even six or something like that. But I think once we get into 2024, I think things are gonna be kind of questionable when it comes to the state of Halo Infinite. With the campaign team being demolished with these updates, it makes me think that they're looking to kind of cut ties with Halo Infinite and basically just kind of just go for multiplayer support. And then as I'm assuming, Probably by June of 2024 might be the last update we would get for Halo Infinite and while they would focus on a brand new game to create. But yeah, this is not looking good for the long term future of Halo Infinite. That 10 year plan, it's not going to happen, which is a shame because I thought that would be the right direction to move with Halo. But obviously the mismanagement of the franchise led Halo Infinite to be, well, a mess. So it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Halo throughout this year of 2023. I'll still be covering news and information that happens on in the game because, well, I really like Halo Infinite. I like the franchise of Halo. So I'm definitely going to be talking about it. But honestly, guys, I might kind of just limit it to more just like when things happen with the franchise rather than trying to release daily content about something to talk about within the franchise, just because it seems like Microsoft isn't all in with Halo Infinite, then why should I be? But this is what 343 needs to do right now. It is to provide straightforward, honest communication to the community right now, because people are thinking, this is the end. Not just like the end of Infinite, but they're talking about like the end of Halo altogether, which I don't think is happening, but we need to know like what is the honest future of Halo Infinite. Clearly it's not gonna be doing the 10 year plan that was mentioned previously. But 343 needs to come out like this month when it comes to what to expect for 2023. We do know that Tashi is putting together a roadmap for the year of 2023 for HCS related things, which could provide some indication of what the support's gonna be looking like for Microsoft and 343. But we need like an actual roadmap moving forward. What's gonna be happening after season three? That is a huge question that the community needs answered to help drive the narrative of what's gonna be happening with this game and it seems like every time there is bad news with halo it just stays bad news microsoft and 343 have the ability to control the narrative that's happening with the community right now but so many times i've seen it happen where they just let that bad news foster and it seems like 343's hands are tied to what they really can't say or reveal like if 343 comes out and says our focus is on season three for halo infinite that's just going to make things worse at least state that we do plan to support Halo Infinite throughout 2023 and beyond. Something like that. I'm pretty sure 343 can hold themselves to doing that. But if 343 decides to go with this publisher route when it comes to handling the Halo franchise, I think it actually could be a net positive for the community. As 343 has proven, it's been really tough for them to make a good Halo game. With Halo 4 and Halo 5 having their questionable fundamental designs of their games, with Halo Infinite being a good game, but just really lacking in a lot of community features and a lot of bugs, it just led it to being like a B-tier kind of game. Which if these decisions are being made now, at least public now, that means it's probably been in the works for the last few months, I wouldn't assume to see any kind of new Halo content really, probably until 2025 at the absolute earliest, maybe 2026. New content as multiplayer stuff and campaign related things. Throughout 2023, we're gonna get our maps, we're gonna get our cosmetics, we're gonna get our weapons and things like that. But I think it's gonna be kind of more just treading water and we're not gonna get a whole lot happening with Halo after June, 2024. As that's the fiscal year rollover for Microsoft. So I'm certain we'll learn about this year what certain if any has been working on for Halo Infinite. It's definitely gonna be releasing sometime within this fiscal year of Microsoft. Um, I've heard rumors of early 2024, but hearing that's what's going on right now, I couldn't imagine that happening. I think they might actually probably push the release date up probably till this fall 
That was the rumored Tatanka mode Battle Royale, which would be like a breath of fresh air, but I think they might release it as a standalone kind of product now and not really tie in the Halo Infinite. Even though we've heard the rumors of Tatanka having the Forge mode tie into it, the progression for the Battle Pass and the multiplayer working together, kind of similar like you see with Warzone with Call of Duty. But we're still a full year away from a launch of that mode happening, so a lot can change because the last year of development is when things really come together. Of course, this is a developing story and I'm going to stick with it guys because this is incredibly important to the future of Halo and I'm going to be bringing to you guys all the info bits that you're going to need to know throughout 2023.